combination of insects, we've got earwigs, slugs, aphids, centre grub, and then at the later in the year we've got diamondback moth and heliophis. We retain all our stubble, so we don't burn any stubble, which means it creates an environment for them over the summer. We've seen an increase in particularly earwigs and slugs. Cultural practices in this area have changed significantly over the last five years. We've gone to a lot of graze and grain crops, which has changed the early pests that we're seeing. It's important to be monitoring. It's important to educate yourself with the um, particular um, crop stage and the most likely insects that would be at that crop stage. Generally in the canola paddocks, we'll start off monitoring for slugs and earwigs. With a lot of the early grazing crops, earwigs are a bigger problem because they're around over summer harbouring in the stubbles and we generally can't burn the stubbles before the crops go in. The slugs generally don't come in until the rain. And then once the crop gets a bit more established, we're in the earliest crops we're looking at cabbage centre grub and aphids. And then once we get to May, when we get the first frost, we're looking more at Red-legged earth might, bryobia might before that, blue oak might, and then through the year back to aphids again. If it's in a valley, we'll generally put a slug bait in the program. Also, if it's a new paddock, we'll put a post-planting insecticide out for red legs because they will generally won't be controlled by other insects. Paddocks that have been in crop for five years, we'll take the foot off the pedal and uh, I let the beneficials really be the main instigator on controlling insects. Get good advice and be on the front foot because the populations explode with the right conditions and you'll end up with significant damage, so it's just education. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.